Welcome. Welcome, everyone, to Celebrate SWE. I'm Penny Worsing, FY19 president, in case you haven't seen me yet this week. And I am thrilled to be here tonight amongst an amazing group of women engineers. This week, yes, yes. Give yourselves a round of applause. This week in uh, Minneapolis has just been such a joy. The WE18 host committee has done a fantastic job, and it's why SWE's annual conference is one of my favorite events. From keynotes to breakout sessions, the buzz from the SWE career fair, and the uh, award recipients we recognized last night and now tonight, I am just thrilled to have been a part of this incredible week. This week, we welcomed over 14,000 attendees. <laughs> to SWE's annual conference, the Career Fair, which wrapped up yesterday, featured more than 340 exhibitors, and we had our choice from more than 300 professional development breakout sessions. Today, in Bennett Build It, our premier outreach program for middle school girls welcomed over 600 participants, including over 380 middle school and high school girls and 184 parents and educators. Yes, very good. And between last night and tonight, we will have recognized over 60 individual award recipients. Up on the screen behind me are the names of those we honored last night at our annual SWE Awards Banquet. Let's take a moment to acknowledge our recipients. You can learn more about all of the inspiring women and men we honored last night and those we will honor this evening in the WE18 conference issue of SWE Magazine. The theme for WE18, and my presidency, is let's break boundaries. And it's a reflection of some of the boundaries I've broken in my career, from being the first person in my family to graduate from college, to helping establish my company's first women's interest network over 20 years ago. Yay, ExxonMobil. <laughs> to helping implement uh, the recent improvements in SWE's volunteer leadership roles, I've gotten pretty comfortable breaking boundaries and making changes. And in the last three days, you may have broken some boundaries yourself by learning how to overcome fear or self-doubt, finding your dream job at the career fair, or making new connections to greatly expand your network. Or perhaps you encouraged fellow Sweesters to break their own boundaries. Whatever it was, we can all count on our sweet community and the people we've met here in Minneapolis to break many more. Yes. Sweet wouldn't celebrate sweet wouldn't be possible without the support of this evening's sponsors, Emerson and Halliburton. What is really impressive is to see, uh, to see is that these sponsors and all of our sponsors for WE18 18 are dedicated to empowering women in their careers in engineering and technology. They not only support SWE financially, but also encourage their employees to take an active role in the society and within their organizations. So before we get the night rolling, we will hear from representatives from each of tonight's sponsors. First, I'd like to welcome Melissa Stiegler, Director of Hygienic Business with Emerson. Good evening, I'm Melissa Stiegler. On behalf of Emerson and the Society of Women Engineers, I'd like to welcome all of you to celebrate SWE here at WE18. Tonight, I'm thrilled for us to gather one last time before we go back out into the world to find innovative solutions to its problems. 
At Emerson, I'm Director of Hygienic Business for Measurement Analytical. I know that doesn't sound very exciting, but I have an amazing job that lets me run a business and a team of great engineers. It's a lot cooler than my dream of one day having an office with a door. <laughs> I have a lot of fun at work and I had a lot of fun here at this conference. And I'm sure you'll agree with me that the last few days have been enlightening, engaging, and inspiring. I remember sitting in the audience of Celebrate Sui as a college student. And if you see me tonight as we honor our graduating senior, seniors, you'll probably see me tearing up. Sui is just such a special place and we have such a special community of people and traditions. And I really encourage you to soak in this experience and remember it for years to come. The Society of Women Engineers has done phenomenal work to advance women in our industry, which is why Emerson is a proud corporate partner of this great organization and tonight's dinner. At Emerson, we're striving to recruit and foster women engineering talent for our company because we believe that bringing together bright and talented people with different experiences and perspectives helps us create new and better ways to solve the world's biggest issues. Our Women in STEM Employee Resource Group now has active chapters in more than 40 countries. In fact, more than 150 of our passionate women in STEM group members, including our male advocates, are here in Minneapolis today. I am grateful to work with these and so many other amazing women at Emerson and across the industry. Looking around this room tonight, I'm glad to be in the company of this wonderful group of women engineers, from retired professionals to recent graduates. You all inspire me and so many others to succeed, to excel, to innovate, and to keep pushing forward. As women in the engineering field, we must support one another and work together to continue to break boundaries for the next generation of innovators. And so with this in mind, I hope we as women continue to advance in our profession and make a difference in the world. Thank you and enjoy the evening. Thank you, Melissa. Next, next, I'd like to welcome Ashira Jones, University Affairs, Northern Region Lead, and University Advisory Board Coordinator with Halliburton. My name is Ashira Jones. I'm the University Affairs Lead, as was mentioned, um, and I do everything on campus from the philanthropy efforts to recruiting in what we call the big three, which is career fairs, info sessions, interviews. So I have the wonderful opportunity of meeting you guys on campus, whether it be at career fairs or applying for jobs. And so, uh, I got my opportunity because in 1919, Earl P. Halliburton began his journey to start a new endeavor in the oil and gas business. And so his first PSL was in the cementing department. And almost 100 years later, we will, well, next year in 2019, we will be celebrating 100 years. And we now have over 55,000 employees in 70 countries and 14 product service lines throughout the oil field in the drilling and evaluation um, sector. I'm sure when he first began his efforts, he was you know, talking to his friends and family and had some doubters and naysayers that didn't necessarily understand um, his vision and his goal as he set out to go across the country and start this um, cementing um, business for oil and gas services. However, um, with like you guys, there may be some opportunities in which you realize um, there's going to be some challenges and some boundaries that are going to need to be broken. There's going to be some people that don't necessarily understand your vision or where you're going, but it's going to be your perseverance that's going to kind of push you and motivate you to determine where you want to go and what your next steps in life are going to be. As an HR professional, I believe in boundaries, I believe in rules and processes and procedures, but sometimes, especially in my <laughs> company or anything I do, there may be boundaries or some processes that just don't make sense or that don't um, fit in line with your goals and your, your vision. So at that point, you're gonna have to look at your purpose in life and determine what you're gonna wanna do. And sometimes it may mean thinking outside of the box or 
pushing you know the limits to, to figure out how you can make your dreams, your goals, and your purpose become reality. Um, again, I've had the opportunity to work with numerous WE chapters from Colorado School of Mines to CSU, amazing school um, that I graduated from. And I have partnered with numerous campuses, as does Halliburton, because we want amazing young women to come into the industry um, that is very uh, industry that's very male dominated. So we want you guys to learn and come and work for us and help change where the organization's going and what our vision is. And I see that you guys are so committed to SWE from everything from fundraising to all of the things that you do on campus. And I thank you guys for allowing me as well as the company to be your partner and um, participate with you. Um, so in conclusion, I would like to congratulate you all for all of your hard work, for stopping by the booth, for learning, for participating in this organization and attending this conference, as well as your willingness to think outside the box, break boundaries, and just go for things that may not have been attainable without others like yourself um, who have you know, set, set the way for young ladies like yourself, and you guys will do the same for other women that come after you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ashira. Let's give one more round of applause to Emerson and Halliburton for their support here this evening. And now, please welcome Elise Stouffer and Aaron Penn from the Minneapolis Host Committee. Good evening, SWE. Have you enjoyed Minneapolis? Let's hear it. Well, here we have it, another annual conference in the books. Minneapolis truly is a city full of surprises. Did you know there are more sunny days here than Chicago? Sorry, headquarters. And that Minneapolis is ranked first among 45 regions for workplace satisfaction. Add a culture that's committed to perfecting the craft of the brew with one of the best park systems in the nation, Minneapolis is certainly one of the nation's best kept secrets. And just over 14,000 engineering students, professionals, and corporate partners have enjoyed our beautiful city this past week. As a society, we continue to grow because of the benefits we offer to our members. From online, online and offline training, career development, and mentorship programs, SWE is looking toward the future with continued growth and influence on colleges and corporations that focus on STEM-related degrees. This week of events could not have happened without all of our corporate sponsors, the thousands of hours put in by SWE headquarters and volunteers, our event planning team, our local Minneapolis host committee, and the hundreds of volunteers that worked endlessly to make sure your conference experience was the best it could be. We couldn't be prouder. Will all WE18 volunteers and headquarters staff please stand to be recognized? Thank you. Thank you to each of you. We look forward to seeing you all again next year at WE19 in Anaheim, California. Hello. I hope you all enjoyed your meal and are ready to be inspired by our keynote speaker, Kim Underhill. As group president of Kimberly Clark's North American consumer business, Kim is responsible for the company's nearly $8 billion personal care and consumer tissue businesses, which are home to some of the world's most recognized and trusted consumer brands, including Huggies, Pull-Ups, Kotex, Depend, Kleenex, Cottonelle, and Scott. Prior to this role, 
Ms. Underhill served as president of Kimberly Clark Professional, where she led one of the company's fastest growing business units, focused on creating exceptional workplaces for business customers. And previously, she served as president of Kimberly Clark's consumer business in Europe. Kim joined Kimberly Clark in 1988 and has managed a wide range of increasing responsibilities within research and engineering, supply chain, and marketing across North American, North American consumer business units. In addition to her role at Kimberly Clark, Kim also serves on the board of directors for Foot Locker Incorporated. Kim is a native of Evansville, Indiana, and she earned her bachelor's degree in chemical engineering from Purdue University and, and her master's degree in engineering management from the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Let's welcome Kim to the stage. Good evening. There's a few uh, crowds out there ready to cheer. Yeah? All right. Well, thank you all for uh, letting me have an opportunity to share a little bit about my background and a little bit of my experiences. And hopefully you'll take away tonight that really anything is possible with an engineering degree. And so I'm going to share with you my story and a few of the inflection points in my career. And hopefully you get a chance to take away just a few nuggets. So first off, as you heard, I work for Kimberly Clark. It's probably a name. I have my cheer, my fan club right here in the front. Thank you all. So Kimberly Clark is a huge company. A lot of times people don't know us. Um, they know our brands, but not necessarily our company. Um, as you heard, we're a, a global business. You'll see that we've been over a, almost 150 years now, a little over $18 billion. And I'm proud to say that I've had a chance to work in every single part of the company. So I'll tell you a little bit about that as time goes on tonight. I think what's really important is that we have huge brands, and so we kind of think of ourselves as cradle to grave, believe it or not. We start with those babies and we end with Depends. So <laughs> it's a pretty exciting, uh, when you think about we cover the full spectrum of life's issues, uh, and uh, you can imagine some of the conversations we have when we're working on our products, but we'll save that for another day. So as you, as you heard, these are some of our great brands. And as I said to you, uh, I'm really proud. I've had a chance to work on every single one of these businesses. And that's also been a bit of my own personal journey uh, in moving through my career, which has made it really exciting. But like most of you sitting out here tonight, engineering is sort of the starting point, And that's what the starting point was for me. So this is me in 1987, my class at Purdue University. Any Purdue folks out there? A few, all right. All right, so scary as it is, and the videos weren't so great back then, but that is me amongst my class there in 1987. Uh, and surprisingly so, we were about a third women in that class, believe it or not. So pretty proud of that uh, when you look back now and look at all of the folks that have gone on to do great things. And I'm not sure how we found that picture because I didn't even actually think it made the internet yet, but it did. So. A little reflection, this was my computer class, okay? Some of you shaking your heads? So the deal was we wrote in Fortran, I don't even think people use it anymore. We had to write our code on cards. We had to sign up for two hour time slots in the computer lab, and if you missed it, you had to go another 24 hours and sign up for it again. So uh, to give perspective, it's been quite a lot of change since I graduated that year in 1987. Times have also changed since then, OK? Microsoft released Windows 2.0. I don't even know what version they're on today, but much more than 2.0. The boombox was common, not Alexa. All right, you guys all remember some of that. Cell phones came in a bag. I actually had one of those, OK? And believe it or not, there was no such thing as a laptop. This was it. So this is what I was, this was, was happening in my life when I was going to school at that time. And so I think now about the wonderful experiences where all of you that are certainly in the academic world today, uh, pretty much everybody has a computer, a cell phone, maybe two printers. So no longer do you have to go in and try to figure out how to slide in that two hour time slot. So tonight I want to tell you my story, going from an engineer 
um, to running an $8 billion business. I will honestly tell you it's not something I would have ever expected to do. My mission was to be a plant leader, a factory leader, um, and really kind of ride out the technical uh, world. But I'm going to share with you a few of those inflection points that actually really made quite a big difference. But I started as a traditional engineer making diamonds at General Electric. So my first job was the coolest job ever. We went out to uh, sites to help uh, drill bits and saw blades actually defining what is the best diamond product to uh, adhere to the product to make sure that we can meet the customer's needs. So I was out on the job site, we'd come back in, we'd do a batch operation, we'd make diamonds, we'd go back out to the field, we'd put them on the saw blades and we'd see if we'd actually work. So I always tell people, I've made diamonds in my career, and it was pretty cool. But certainly uh, was not the end game by any means. And so I decided to leave GE because I uh, was decided to get married. And my husband and I took off and headed north to Kimberly-Clark. Um, and that's what has landed me there over 30 years ago. So tonight I'm going to tell you a little bit about a couple of really key points in my career. And it's actually been really fun for me to sit back and prepare the comments tonight because it actually gave me an appreciation of all the wonderful things and people that have entered my life and have actually really made a very big difference to where I've landed today. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is a dear friend of mine, Bruce Painter. And for those people that are Kimberly Clark may know the name. Unfortunately, Bruce died in, 19, or in 2009 of ALS. But he is, uh, has been and continues to be with me, and so you're gonna hear me talk about Bruce a little bit this evening. But he really taught me three very important things as I went through my career. And he was a real mentor, and I probably didn't realize it until many years down the road on just how much of an impact Bruce was making. But first he said, be patient. Be patient with yourself. Uh, make sure that you continue on this learning path. But, but be patient and, and be curious as you go through your career. And when you're starting out, you're anxious. You want it all. You want to go. You want the big project. You want the next big assignment. But he was like, Kim, be patient. It will come. Work hard and you'll get what you deserve. The second thing he instilled to me is be in it for the long haul. And be in it to, to grab experiences and do things that people wouldn't normally expect you to do as a way of differentiating yourself as you continue to, bro to grow in the business world. And lastly, as you see by his quote, it was all about living your values every day. And this will be one of my important messages to all of you, is find a company that you love. Find a company that is about the values that you believe in and make sure that you live those every single day. So what's really kind of interesting, and if he only knew, this is a tree that's planted outside my office because today I sit in the exact same chair that Bruce did in the very first time I went to his office to get career advice. And so it's pretty special when I sit there and I think about a hard problem or something really difficult. All I gotta do is look out the window and there he is. And so my challenge to you in thinking about the first key message tonight is Find your Bruce. Find that person that's special, that can give you advice, that you trust, and that can really, really make a difference in your career. The second inflection point was taking a cross-functional assignment. So here's the bit of the story. So I had been working as a process engineer uh, on a particular project. We were making a Kleenex Ultra. And so from a technical perspective, we were putting a silicone emulsion on top of a porous web. So for all you engineers, you can imagine how difficult that might be. So we finished the project. I had been working directly with the marketers. We had been working on advertising claims, packaging design, and, and I was the team leader on, on the project. And so the project was winding down, and I was getting ready for sort of my next assignment. And who shows up at my door? Bruce. He said, hey, Kim, I think you should take a cross-functional assignment in marketing. And I was like, are you kidding me? I don't, I don't think like those, I haven't been trained as a marketer. And he's like, no, I think you should give it a shot. And so pondered it for a bit, and honestly, I didn't have a next step in my career in terms of the next technical job. So I ended up taking it, and he said to me, he said, Kim, uh, let's give it six months. And if you really don't like it, he said, I promise you, we'll put you back on the career path, back into R&E, and off you go. So I hated it. I can't even tell you how much I hated it. I mean, every night I got in my car and I thought, what have I done? And so I went back to Bruce and I said, I'm done. I've given it six months. I'm ready to head back into R&E. And he said, you can't. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. We had a deal here. 
And he said, I'm not going to let you go back, Kim, because you have not given yourself the benefit of all the hard work in the last six months. Be patient, he said, because you don't even realize how much you've learned in the last six months. So he said, you know what, another six months, and if you really, really don't like it, he said, you can head back. So guess what? I never went back. So the lesson there was be patient with yourself. Put yourself into something new and different. And all of a sudden, I found that I had this passion for business and that my engineering skills of being able to be a good problem solver, to manage project timelines, all of a sudden uh, stepped into the world of a little bit of chaos in our marketing team at the time. So it was a really great point um, in terms of actually Bruce really pushing me. And I didn't realize how important that particular assignment was until many years later. So the next inflection point, once again, I went to see Bruce. So I got a call from my boss saying, hey, Kim, there's a job open up in the UK to go run our consumer business in Europe. And so I was like, that's a really big step. The business was in trouble. Um, and so I was going to be asked to come in and have a, to, to have a go to see if I could get it fixed. And so um, it, the story has many angles on it. The first angle was I called my husband and he said, I said, hey, we got an opportunity to live and, and go out abroad. And so he said, well, let's go home and let's talk about it as a family. And I said, oh boy, that's not going to be good because my son was 12 at the time. So I decided to leave the office early. I went to pick up my son from baseball practice, and I said, hey, we're going to have a family meeting tonight. And he looked at me and he said, you better tell us we're not moving, Mom. <laughs> and I was like, oh. So we went home. Uh, I said, well, actually, we are going to have a move, and uh, we're going to go to London. And he said, well, do they have cell phones there? <laughs> and I said, well, oh, my God, i got to get this kid out of Wisconsin and let him see the world. So. So we, uh, we booked a flight, we went over to see it, everything was great, we came back, and um, I was still a little bit uns unsure, and so I went to see Bruce, and un unfortunately at this point in time he was, he was near the end, and he looked at me and he said, Kim, if you don't go, will you always regret it? And I said, I will, so we're going. So we came home, we packed up our stuff, and within three months we were uh, moved across the ocean and settled in the beautiful city of London. And it was one of the most fabulous experiences as I look back now on the five years that we had, had a chance to live there. The next inflection point was taking on a new business. So the call comes after five years in London, hey Kim, do you want to come back and run our B2B business? So I had been at Kimberly Clark for quite a long time here, and embarrassing to have a question to the CEO was, well, how big is that business again, and what do they make? And so he said, Kim, you, you're just going to have the time of your life. And I'm like, well, at that point, I was a little bit ready to come back um, and probably take on a new assignment. So we packed up and moved back to the United States in 2014, and I went to work in the B2B business. So the B2B business is thinking about every public restroom possible. Whether you're in a hotel, whether you're in a hospital, whether you're in a university. So all you now can look for Kimberly Clark products as you go out into these public restrooms. But this was a completely different business model. So while I understood the technology and I understood how to build strategies and how to develop innovation, this was a new customer base for me. We weren't selling to Walmart or to Target or to Costco we were selling to the likes of people called network and uh, all kinds of new customers that I had had no experience with. And also I would tell you it was sort of the place where in many times in our company you were not, the best talent wasn't put on this business here. And so when I came to the business, it was in pretty rough shape. But we went to work once again using our engineering skills of what do we know, what's working, what's not working, what are our options, and how do we evaluate the business. And before you know it, we started to uncover some really great business opportunities. I'm proud to say that it was, in two years in a row, the fastest growing business within Kimberly Clark. And so it was a real big transformation for me also to go in at a very senior level and also to run a global business to all of a sudden put myself in a very uncomfortable spot, which also comes back to, if Bruce knew that today, he would certainly be proud, as he was always one to say, take a bet, get out there and learn something, and before you know it, you're on to something big. So tonight, I hope you have enjoyed a little bit of my story. I'd love to talk about it, could talk about it all night, um, but I hope you take away a couple things. One is, really anything is very possible with your engineering degree. I would have never expected when I graduated in 1987 with a chemical engineering degree that I'd have a chance to be running an $8 billion company today. So you can do it. 
set your mind to it. I didn't have a grand plan. I did kind of just follow my heart. Um, but find that great company that's going to invest in you and grow. It's a company that allowed me to take cross-functional moves, move internationally, and work on different business models that's allowed me to come and run this business today. Find a mentor. Find your Bruce and really focus on that. It's another piece of advice I wish that I would have taken uh, much earlier in my career and really, really uh, invested in it. And I always tell people it doesn't have to be the same mentor. You can have lots of different mentors, but I really would encourage you to find your Bruce. Keep your mind open to possibilities. So that experience I felt when I went into marketing was pretty scary. I'd gone from a place that I was really comfortable, technically could, you know, take care of all of it, and then all of a sudden I'm sitting in the room with marketers and I couldn't understand what they were talking about. So you learn, right? You go back to school, you learn, you get an education, and you really focus on it. I'd also say don't be too rigid um, in your plans. I do get a chance to talk to a lot of people about career development, and everyone has this like firm plan, like I'm going to be here in two months, and then I'm going to be here in two years. And I would just say it's good to have a plan, but don't be too rigid on that. Sometimes opportunities come up when you least expect it, and those are the ones that you should grab on and take. And finally, take a chance. You never know where it will lead. I took my first job as an engineer uh, making diamonds, and now I get to make diapers. So <laughs> I'm really proud to stand it to here in front of you all tonight. It is just, if you guys could see the view up here, it is just awesome. And the energy today and this week, what I've heard from the teams has been phenomenal. So thank you again, and best of luck. That was wonderful, Kim. On, on behalf of the Society of Women Engineers and all of th those in the audience tonight, thank you for sharing your story. Now it's time to carry out a timeless tradition here at Celebrate SWE. We're going to give all of our collegiates graduating within this academic year a flower to recognize your achievement of this important milestone. Through, yes. <laughs> Throughout your collegiate experience, you have counted on SWE and your fellow members as constant sources of friendship, mentoring, and resources to help you in your aspirations to make engineering and technology a rewarding career choice. Of course, your SWE experience doesn't end with your college experience. We encourage you to continue looking to SWE for camaraderie and support as you break boundaries in your career and life. Please stand, accept our congratulations, and come forward to receive a flower.
Okay. Well, here I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one out to the audience. Ooh. I have no idea where I went. <laughs> Congratulations again to all of our Swedes, uh, all of Swedes graduating collegiates. It's so exciting to see this group of young women and men. I know each and every one of you is going to go out there and engineer our world into a better place. Now it's time to recognize a number of your peers as we begin this evening's award presentation. I'm going to ask Cindy Hoover, FY19 president-elect, to come up and help present our first round of awards. Okay, before we begin announcing tonight's award recipients, I would like to recognize all awards and recognition committee members for their time and dedication to selection of tonight's and last night's recipients. Would all A&R committee members, including chair and chair-elect, Allison Bergman and Ashley Copeland, please stand. Thank you for your contributions. I'd also like to recognize everyone in the audience who has ever received any type of SWE award during a past Celebrate SWE event to please stand or raise your hand and be recognized. For many of us here tonight, our first encounter with SWE began in our undergraduate years. We made the choice to become an engineer, and it suddenly became real. But in addition to the countless hours it takes to pursue a degree, there are also the financial commitments. SWE has a long history of providing support through their scholarship program, one of the largest programs dedicated to supporting women who are pursuing STEM degrees. And the financial support awarded by SWE is due in large part to the incredible individuals and forward-thinking organizations who support diversity. So although it's a difficult job to decide who receives one of SWE's many scholarships, it's an important one and one SWE takes very seriously. SWE receives thousands of applications annually and our dedicated committee members take on the daunting task to review the applications and identify the recipients. In particular, I would like to say a special thank you to scholarship coordinator Erica Brackman and coordinator-elect Susan During. I'd also like to give a big thank you to all of our judges for their commitment to this effort. Thank you. All right, I'm happy to announce that SWE awarded 238 scholarships and fellowships, totaling more than $830,000 this past year. A complete list of scholarships and respective recipients is outlined in tonight's program. Would this year's scholarship recipients in attendance please stand and be recognized? For, uh, we have certificates at the awards table for each of you that you can pick up after tonight's program. And now, for anyone in the room who has benefited from a SWE scholarship in the past, please stand as well and be recognized. Congratulations to you all. The young women we are about to recognize are kept busy as they pursue their education while having a myriad of things stretching them in several different directions. Tonight, we're going to recognize a group of women who have excelled at rising to the challenges of undergrad and graduate life with the SWE Outstanding Collegiate Member Award. 
As I call your name, please come to the stage. You can enter to my left and receive your award. You'll pose with Penny for a photo as well. Our first award recipient is being recognized for outstanding academic accomplishments in bioengineering and for a stellar record of civic and professional activism expressed through SWE leadership, community service, and international volunteer work. SWE recognizes Ziba Bhatnagar from Rice University. <laughs> For demonstrated SWE leadership throughout her undergraduate career, and for sharing her engineering experiences with many young women and girls, inspiring them to join the profession, SWE recognizes Carlisle DeJulius from the University of Akron. Next, we recognize Cheryl Victor from the University of California, Davis for academic excellence in chemical engineering, for mentoring many women engineering students to success, and for a positive impact on SWE and the overall campus community. Unfortunately, Cheryl is unable to be with us today. For extraordinary efforts on behalf of SWE and female engineering students at Yale, chartering a collegiate section and simultaneously founding a SWE graduate student committee, SWE recognizes Bridget Haggerty from Yale University. For strong scholarship in chemical engineering, for dedication to SWE's mission, and for active commitment to expanding the definition of social justice, diversity, and inclusion, SWE recognizes Caitlin Hines from the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. For creative and wide-ranging SWE leadership, for balancing educational and life goals, and for exceptional service to others on campus, in the community, and abroad, we recognize Sarah Lobenson from the University of Texas at Austin. For dedication to SWE's mission through volunteering, outreach, and mentoring, and for significant contributions to the engineering profession through campus and community leadership, SWE recognizes Abby Pekeltis from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. <laughs> From Puerto Rico, our next recipient is being honored for demonstrating strong and resilient leadership, for dedication to her community, and for successfully engaging many young women and girls in engineering concepts through SWE outreach events. Please congratulate Francine Reyes Vega of the University of Puerto Rico, Meg West Campus. Kelsey Riffle from Ohio State University is recognized tonight for exemplifying the SWE goal of professional excellence, for engaging young students in STEM, and for promoting diversity and inclusion on campus, in technical societies, and in the workplace. Next, we recognize Catherine Rose Skaboria from Villanova University for academic excellence in mechanical engineering and for extending her SWE leadership from the college campus to Costa Rica, inspiring young girls there about STEM careers.
Great work, ladies. Congratulations once again to all of the 2018 SWE Outstanding Collegiate Member Award recipients. Many of us in this room have likely relied on SWE sections and fellow members to help remain connected to the society and each other. SWE sections are where we form some of our strongest bonds and are key to the society's success and growth. Understanding this, SWE created a new set of awards designed to recognize all groups that contribute to the mission of SWE. From sections to MAL groups to affiliates, employee resource groups, and affinity groups. The aim of these awards, titled SWE Mission Awards, is to highlight areas of focus within the SWE strategic goals and the groups that have gone above and beyond to help make those goals a reality. Recipients of the Mission Awards demonstrate alignment with SWE core values and continuous improvement and growth and are recognized at gold, silver, or bronze achievement levels. In addition, nominees will receive best practice awards for outstanding actions or activities in a specific goal area that best supports SWE core values and strategic goals. We first recognize the recipients. Their names appear on the bronze level collegiate mission award screens behind me. Recipients, please send one representative to the stage to partake in a group photo. Certificates can be picked up at the awards table after the event ends. Next, we will recognize the Silver Level Collegiate Mission Award recipients. Their names, again, will appear on the screens behind me. <laughs> again, if recipients will please send one representative to the stage to partake in the group photo. We will now recognize the Gold Level Collegiate Mission Award recipients. 
Again, their names are going to appear on the screens behind me. Same drill, ladies. Please send one representative to the stage. to our Mission Award recipients. Okay, we're gonna move on to the Professional Mission Award recipients now. We first recognize the Bronze Level Professional Mission Award recipients. Their names again will appear on the screens behind me. Again, please send one representative to the stage to take the group photo. And certificates can be picked up at the awards table after the event. Next, we're going to recognize the Silver Level Professional Mission Award recipients. Again, their names will appear on the screens behind me. And please send one representative to the stage. to recognize the Gold Level Professional Mission Award recipients. Again, their names will appear on the screens behind me, and please send one representative to the stage to partake in the group photo. Congratulations to our Professional Mission Award recipients.
The Mission Awards also recognize collegiate and professional groups who display the greatest effort in achieving the strategic goals set forth by the society. These awards are known as the Best Practices Awards and they are broken into three parts based on the society's three major strategic goals. Goal number one, professional excellence. Goal number two, globalization. And goal number three, advocacy. For fiscal year 19, we added a fourth goal of a diversity and inclusion. Recipients, please send one representative to the stage to partake in the group photo. And again, certificates can be picked up after the event. First, we start with, we'll start with our first group receiving their awards for achieving outstanding success in professional development under strategic goal number one. For collegiates, we recognize the following. Humboldt State University, Purdue, SWE, and SWE University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. For professionals, we recognize Medtronic, SWEENET, Minnesota Section, and SWE Central Illinois. Achieving outstanding success in SWE leadership development and mentoring under strategic goal number one, we recognize the collegiates. Cornell University SWE, Georgia Institute of Technology, and UC Berkeley SWE. For the professionals, we are going to recognize the Leadership Coaching Committee, Minnesota Section, and Oklahoma City. Achieving outstanding success in mentoring under strategic goal number one, we recognize the collegiates. Ohio State University, SWE TAMU, and the University of Tennessee. Professionals, we recognize Baltimore Washington Section, Exxon Mobil Houston Women's Interest Network, and the Rocky Mountain Section.
recipients. At this time, I would like to invite Allison Bergman, Fiscal Year 18 Awards Chair, to the stage to complete the remaining Mission Awards. Allison? For achieving outstanding success in communication under strategic goal number two, globalization, we recognize the collegiates. Colorado School of Mines, Temple University Society of Women Engineers, the University of Texas at Austin Society of Women Engineers. Professionals, we recognize Emerson Women in STEM Employee Resource Group, the Leadership Coaching Committee, and SWE Hartford Professional Section. Achieving outstanding success in membership retention and engagement under strategic goal number two, we recognize the collegiates. Carnegie Mellon University, Colorado School of Mines, and UC Berkeley SWE. For professionals, we recognize Columbia River, Medtronic SWE Net, Raw Sweet Rockwell Automation supporting women in engineering. Outstanding success in partnerships with collegiates, professionals, industry, and academia under strategic goal number two, we recognize the collegiates. California Polytechnic, State University, San Luis Obispo, Society of Women Engineers, Carnegie Mellon University, and University of Wisconsin-Madison. Professionals, we recognize Medtronic SWE Net, SWE Detroit, and SWE Hartford Professional Section.
outstanding success with a global awareness Focus under strategic goal number two, we recognize the collegiates. The Liberia Society of Women Engineers, the Pennsylvania State University Society of Women Engineers, and Villanova University of the Society of Women Engineers. we recognize Northrop Grumman Women's International Network, Swedes Central Illinois, and the Society of Women Engineers at the JHU Applied Physics Laboratory, SWE at APL. in outreach under strategic goal number three, we recognize the collegiates. California Polytechnic State University San Luis Obispo Society of Women Engineers. The Pennsylvania State University Society of Women Engineers and Yale University. Recognize Dallas Sweet, Emerson Women in STEM Employee Resource Group, and KC Sweet. public policy under strategic goal number three, we recognize the collegiates. California Polytechnic State University, San Luis Obispo Society of Women Engineers, Georgia Institute of Technology, and Yale University. We recognize SWE at Boeing, SWE Central Illinois, and SWE Hartford Professional Section. In SWE resource promotion under strategic goal number three, we recognize the collegiates. SWE University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, 
University of Pittsburgh SWE and Yale University. We recognize Emerson Women in STEM Employee Resource Group, the Leadership Coaching Committee, and SWE at Boeing. Finally, for achieving outstanding success in awards and recognition under strategic goal number three, we recognize the collegiates. SWE, T-A-M-U, SWE at UVA, and the University of Florida Society of Women Engineers. We recognize Minnesota Section, SWE at Boeing, and the Tulsa Northeast Oklahoma Section. Congratulations to all our Best Practice Award recipients. I now like to welcome back Penny to announce the remaining awards. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Allison. As many of us in this room know, it takes hard work and dedication to ensure diversity in our communities and places of business. To that end, we will now celebrate the SWE sections that demonstrate the strongest diversity and inclusion through the Motorola Foundation Multicultural Awards for professional sections and the Boeing Company Multicultural Awards for collegiate sections. First, the Motorola Foundation Multi Multicultural Award for the development and implementation of the best multicultural program designed to increase and retain a diverse membership among professional section goes to the Sierra Nevada section. And on behalf of the Boeing Company, 
I'm proud to announce the collegiate section recognized for the development and implementation of the best multicultural program. The Boeing Company Multicultural Award goes to California Polytechnic University, San Luis Obispo. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we've aspired, we've ad ad advanced, and now it's time to talk about achievement. We're going to head into the final portion of tonight's celebration, and from what I understand, it's going to be full of amazing women who will build upon the inspiring achievements we've already witnessed this evening in order to break some boundaries. But before we go any further, how about if we take a quick moment and stand up and stretch our legs? did feel good, didn't it? I hope you all feel a little re-energized. Okay, so tonight we'd like to highlight members who have said, I am with SWE for quite some time, beginning with our 25-year members. If you are one of these ladies, please stand. Our 25-year member names appear on the screens behind me. Okay, let's take this to the next level. We have members here tonight who have doubled the 25-year milestone. If you are celebrating 50 years or more of SWE membership, <laughs> please stand or wave as our 50-year member names appear on the screens. to say that these 25 and 50 year mem members have been responsible for breaking a lot of boundaries and hopefully will continue to do so well into the future. The next group of members we recognize are very special to SWE. When individual SWE members become life members, they make the decision to demonstrate a personal commitment to the society and to our mission. As a SWE life member, you provide financial and emotional support to SWE initiatives such as K-12 outreach, collegiate scholarship administration, and professional development. They literally are saying, I am with SWE for life. I'd like to ask all current LIFE members to stand and be recognized. I would now like to draw your attention to the screens behind me and view the newest SWE Life members. Yeah. Right you. Congratulations again to all of our 50, 25 and 50 year members and our new SWE Life members. Your commitment to SWE and the engineering profession provide motivation and inspiration to your peers, and to the next generation of women engineers to come. 
Each year at the WE Conference, we are fortunate to host some of the world's leading minds and experts in the field of engineering and technology. What impresses me most is that these individuals fall across the full spectrum of career stages. Many of us here tonight most likely formed our SWE bonds beginning in college. An important part of any engineering college student's life is the opportunity to demonstrate technical expertise to their peers, educators, and mentors. The WE Conference Collegiate Technical Poster Competition is one of those opportunities. To be selected as a participant, authors need to demonstrate creativity, innovation, and technical expertise. Each year, we expect the level of technical thought to be exceptional, and this year was no different. Our selection committee had to work hard and make some challenging decisions in order to select the finalists. Thank you and congratulations to all the collegiates who authored posters. Also, thank you to the judges for your thoughtful consideration. As your name is called, please come onto the stage to receive your certificate. The winners in the undergraduate poster competition cat category are, in third place, Jessica Yin, Carnegie Mellon University, design and fabrication of stretchable liquid metal sensor skin for soft robotic gripper. Place, Elena Johnson, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Influence of catalyst physiochemical properties for olefin <laughs> epoxidation with hydrogen peroxide over group four and five metal oxide catalysts. place, Ava Karinja, Arizona State University, characterizing forum sensing phenotypes and pseudomonas. I'm going to leave it at that. student poster category. In third place, Rachel Tenney, University of Minnesota, production of nitrogen and phosphorus rich crystals from municipal wastewater for sustainable nutrient recovery, who is unable to be with us this evening. Sorry. In second place, Sarah Robb, Carnegie Mellon University, is faster FDA review time for cardiovascular devices correlated with adverse health outcomes as evidenced by increased recalls. And first place, Samantha Zeller, Zellner, University of North Texas, corrosion measurement of silicone carbide.
The rapid fire presentations describe original research or project work with an application in engineering. They consist of laboratory work, computer simulation or modeling projects, or modeling projects that are new and unique. Presentations were limited to five minutes with additional time for the audience to ask questions. As your name is called, please come up on stage to receive your certificate. The winners in the undergraduate rapid fire category, in third place, Gabrielle Mills, Arizona State University. <laughs> Development of zebrafish model to study childhood epileptic and caused by <laughs> Dynamin One mutate, mutation, it has been a long week. Come on, you gotta give me a break. But I'm loving every minute of it. In second place, Shivana Koo, uh, Marquette University, Santran, Sanskrit to English translator using deep learning. And first place, Sarah Spivak. University of California, Berkeley, reducing fetal surgery complications with ad adhesive patches. student rapid fire category. In third place, Kritika Iyer, University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. Non-invasive diagnostics of coronary artery disease using machine learning and computational fluid dynamics. Yes. In second place, Kamen Novak, University of Michigan. Compressive stimulus enhances ovarian cancer proliferation, invasion, and mechanotransduction in a novel 3D compression bioreactor. Thank you. <laughs> and in first place, Jennifer DiStefano, Northwestern University, utilizing 2D materials in core shell nanocomposites. Congratulations to all our technical poster and rapid fire competition recipients. Now we will announce the winners of the Boeing Team Tech competition. This competition is designed to illustrate the importance of teamwork and create opportunities for engineering students to work with and learn from established engineers. Each year, we invite interdisciplinary teams of engineering students to propose project challenges of particular interest to them. If their proposals are accepted, the teams proceed and their final projects are evaluated by a, team, a panel of judges. The Boeing Company Team Tech comp competitors must work together to produce project reports, obtain industrial advisor evaluations, and prepare oral presentations. In each case, the team's projects demonstrate a grasp of the challenge and creative problem solving. We congratulate all of the teams that participated in this year's challenge, and in particular, the three award recipients I'm going to announce. 
All team members should come forward when your team is announced. For our third place winner, we are proud to present $1,250. Each member of the team receives $100 with the remaining funds donated to the sponsoring SWE Collegiate Section. In third place, University of Illinois at Ur Urbana-Champaign, working with Caterpillar Inc. Data Acquisition Module for Off-Road Machines. For our second place winner, we award $2,500. Each member of the team receives $200 with the remaining funds donated to the sponsoring Sweet Collegiate Section. In second place, University of Puerto Rico. Working with Boston Scientific of Puerto Rico, proximal and distal assembly process. And tonight's first place team will receive $5,000 with each member receiving $400. The remaining funds are don donated to the sponsoring suite collegiate section. This year's first place award recipient is California Polytechnic State University, San Luis Obispo, working with Lockheed Martin Crew Overboard Alarm System. Congratulations again to tonight's team. Uh, now we're going to turn our attention to our final awards for the evening. Tonight's final team-based competition is the PepsiCo SWE Student Engineering Challenge. Since 2015, PepsiCo has invited SWE Collegiate members to present innovative solutions to real engineering problems. PepsiCo invites and sponsors three finalist teams to present their engineering solutions to a panel of PepsiCo engineers at WE18. I'm excited to welcome the 2018 PepsiCo judges to the stage as I announce this year's PepsiCo SWE Student Engineering Challenge winners. Judges? In third place is Team Zen Zorality with Courtney Lynch, Anjala Bush, and Tarika Patel from the University of Wisconsin Madison. In second place is Team Sweesters with Bethany Kirsten, Emily Chambers, Haley Johnson, and Archana Dahl from the University of Idaho.
And in first place is Team HydroTube with Marianne Piera, Lindsay R Ritchie, Joanna Azevedo, and Oliver Nicholas from the University of Virginia and Georgia Tech. Congratulations again to the three finalist teams, and we're already looking forward to the PepsiCo Student Engineering Challenge at WE19. Being a constant servant, servant to the greater good and supporting SWE for a lifetime takes considerable commitment, which is why SWE recognizes SWE members or associate members who have made significant contributions to the Society of Women Engineers for at least 20 years, especially at the local level or on society level committees. This award is intended to recognize members whose involvement has been focused in areas not recognized by other SWE individual awards or member grade. Tonight, we recognize two such worthy recipients of the SWE Distinguished Service Award. First, for the sustained contributions to SWE, her workplace, and community, and for inspiring women in the engineering profession through advocacy, volunteering, and visionary organizational leadership, tonight we recognize SWE fellow Nora Lynn of Northrop Grumman Corporation. And our second Distinguished Service Award is given to SWE Fellow Linda Thomas with the Boeing Company for being a shining example of SWE's mission, pushing for personal success and promoting women in engineering, and for unwavering advocacy of diversity and inclusion within the society and beyond. Congratulations again to Nora and Linda on your wonderful achievement, and thank you for all of the support you've given SWE over the years. Our final awards of the night recognize individuals we all had some contact, contact with in our collegiate careers. During undergrad life, and for some during postgraduate work, collegiates face a number of challenges. While hopefully we can all count on family and friends for support, at times, we need someone special to turn to, to seek guidance and advice on our path toward our degree. That person may just be a SWE counselor. Our network of dedicated individuals on campuses around the US and, and abroad work hard to ensure that our collegiate sections receive thoughtful, helpful guidance. 
we now recognize the recipients of this year's Distinguished SWE Counselor Awards. We, can congratulate, we congratulate Anne P. Cadill with Caterpillar Inc. Yes, I think we're supposed to congratulate her. We recognize Anne tonight for bringing the wisdom, energy, and compassion gained as an engineer and a SWE member to her role as counselor for the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign Collegiate Section. Congratulations, Anne. That is a gorgeous face. Okay. <laughs> My, what an exciting evening and what a week it's been here at WE18. Minneapolis has been an outstanding host for WE18, and we thank you. <laughs> so it's truly with mixed emotions that we say goodbye to this lovely city and turn our attention to WE19, which will be held November 7th through 9th, 2019, in Anaheim, California, my backyard. <laughs> there we will celebrate how we live, we learn, and we lead. To say a few words about our WE19 conference host city, please welcome Paula Chavira, from the, ninth, the WE19 host committee who will invite us to next year's conference in Anaheim. I was one page advanced. Good evening, fellow Swisters, supporters, and attendees. I'm excited to welcome you to one of the best cities in the world. It has Disneyland. Anaheim is a city built on imagination. It is a place that invites you to be your own character from the scenes, from sights to sounds. In Anaheim, there is never a dull moment, and we are excited to share a little bit of the OC with you. I believe you can see we like to entertain, so please um, visit us. Are you excited? We are very excited. On behalf of the Anaheim Host Committee, we look forward to showing you how amazing Orange County is at WE19. 
See you next year. I can't wait to see you all again in next year in Anaheim. Again, my backyard. <laughs> and, for, and a very special thank you to each of you for being here this, e week, this evening. Uh, and all the volunteers from the Minneapolis section and around the world that have helped make this possible. Thank you again tonight to tonight's sponsors, Emerson and Halliburton. Thank you to our keynote, Kim. And thank you to all of our hardworking Swiss staff. They make me look good. <laughs> That's a wrap. Have a wonderful evening and good night. Join us outside in the hall for the traditional Swee dance party.